I felt that I needed to help these people. My grandfather always said, you know, I've built my business, he called it my castle. When you build something of a certain quality, it pays off. The company was set up over a hundred years ago. We are now moving to the fourth generation. I happened to deliver the sandwiches at the time when the agreement was being signed. The change is happening now. My father was from Virgu, my mother was from Lisla, my brother was from Bormla, and that was, that's where, because in the past, before the war, that's where everything happened, it's by the port. The approach to business is very fair. It is built on very solid values, which were brought along by uh, Spiro Mitziv. Originally, my grandfather had the business of ship shandling. They used to fill the emergency ships with food and drink and, and messmen. Then, 1918, immediately after the First World War, the British government decided to do away with this, with our, us, and they brought in NAFI. They did not give us six months or a year in which to get rid of, the, of our supplies. And therefore, we had a lot of food. So, um, my father gave a lot to to the uh, charitable institutions, and that was the end of, of the story. Then my father was a very practical man, more practical than I am, and he thought cars were going to be quite something, were quite important, and he was right, and he went into cars. The organization is, is very dynamic. The family is very dynamic. They never shy away from any new investment opportunity. We are now moving to the fourth generation of the family. And uh, my, gran my grandfather, Spiro Mitzis, founded the business uh, over a hundred years ago. Uh, it was taken over by his three sons, my father and his two brothers. My grandfather always said, you know, I've built my business. He called it my castle and I'm, I want to see my sons take it further and the generations and generations. They need to work hard. And he didn't even allow my father to take holidays. So this was the mentality. I got to know that Rambler were making a factory to build cars in Malta. And I realized that had that happened, we would be out of business because the majority of the population would be buying a Rambler cars and not our cars. And so I quickly decided to, that we should have a, a car assembly. My, myself and Joe, my brother and John, we got together and we made a car assembly. So my earliest memories of the business start already at the dining table as children and my dad always going on about um, his business, how happy he is that he set up the car assembly plant him taking us there to see it, the way they assembled cars. I remember I used to very often accompany my father to Muscats and also to Car Assembly. The Car Assembly was a line they used to produce Morris Miners and these cars which they used to export to Cyprus. I remember over there he used to have a garden and he used to have his cherry trees and flowers and he always used to cut flowers for mother, mom and take them home. It changes all the time. What's important is we, we keep, we're keeping up to date with what the market wants and what the customer wants. I think the push to electric is inevitable. I think that um, we have reached a stage uh, where there's no longer any doubt that uh, emissions are having an effect on our climate. And I'm proud to say that the automotive sector of Mitsui organization has the largest offering of electric vehicles on the market. The change is happening now and the, the future is electric cars. And it's already happened in Malta. Most consumers are very interested, especially in plug-in hybrids. They're very interested in electric cars. The limitation we have with electric cars is charging. It's the length of time it takes to charge, and the availability of charging stations. A lot of people live in flats, and they don't have access to garages where they can charge their cars. Uh, so the government has to come up with on-street charging 
facilities. We continue pushing for uh, less emissions and more moving on into electrification. We also hold talks with governments to, to continue promoting the use of electric vehicles. Um, and I think we're heading in the right direction. I've now been driving electric cars for three or four years. I'm amazed at how comfortable they are, how fast they are. Malta, immediately after the war, when we were helping people, we were helping each other. If somebody didn't have anything to eat, we used to, I used to f see what we can do to, to give them something to eat. I felt that I needed to help these people. And I made a foundation, and it's made every year it makes money. The company was set up over 100 years ago. So along the years, the shareholders, the family, has built a group with, with a very steady financial structure. I remember when my father, as a young, as a young boy, probably aged around six, took me to see the Meliha Bay Hotel being built, which was a joint venture company between ourselves and uh, Alf Mitzi. It played a big role in Malta's tourism industry and today has reached its end of use and is going to be rebuilt to suit more current trends in tourism. I managed to get approval um, from my board to demolish the block of apartments, which was being used for self-catering, and build the Waterfront Hotel, which um, is now a very important part of our hospitality division. And we recently added two extra floors and refurbished the whole hotel. The real estate sector of the Mitsu organization is very, very vast. We liberated a site and I built 31 apartments. Uh, from day one, I wanted to up the quality, even though my target uh, market was people working in the middle hospitality. And I knew they were going to be young people, I knew what young people want. So we put in big TVs, places where to charge your phone, the CCTV, backup generator and it shows that when you build something of a certain quality, it pays off. Arcadia started off by um, acquiring a site in Gozo, which uh, we developed into a shopping centre. Uh, it's been here for the past 22 years. We have our food stores, we have our fashion brands. That was quite a challenge in itself. Gozo in those days um, was not the hottest place for shopping. And I must say, we changed all that. So Talbent and Arcadia, all in all, the group did a very good job in uh, finishing up the place on time, just in time for Valletta 18. Remodeling the place, the place was run down. A very heavy investment went in there. When I started with the family business, I started right at the bottom uh, repairing the machines at General Soft Drinks, which is Coca-Cola franchise. I spent some time doing that and eventually moved up the ranks uh, to uh, general manager and I ran the, the operation then for around 16 years. I made it a point to understand what the jobs uh, that people were doing involved. My father and his brothers uh, purchased the business in 1971, April 71. I happened to deliver the sandwiches uh, at the time when the agreement was being signed and I ended up never leaving. The factory that we purchased uh, was in Ormi um, until we then eventually, uh, in 2008, moved into the premises that we're in right now. Because we moved from returnable glass, which was the most environmentally friendly, I tried hard to uh, lobby to stay in uh, returnable glass. We are now producing in PET, which obviously um, creates an environmental problem if it's not treated properly or collected. So over the last three to four years, uh, we've been working very hard um, in order to put into operation 
a non-profit collection of all the PET that we put out on the market. Titan was in the hands of a nephew, and um, at one stage he decided to, to resign, and I thought, no, air conditioners are future appliances. Obviously with the building boom, there is uh, extensive opportunity for Titan. Uh, it's one of the larger uh, companies that does provide the service, and therefore I think Titan has a very major role to play. So definitely there's, there's a lot to be learned from them and from the way they do business and definitely something good has been done because if not the business would not be here 102 years later so, so definitely there's, there's a lot to learn. I do believe that the Mitsui organization is a company that is looked up with a bit of pride and a bit of loyalty. They have contributed a lot especially in all sectors whether it's cars, whether it's tourism, whether it's Retail. The future of the Mitsui organization here is obviously looking bright. We have the fourth generation coming on. One piece of advice that I do pass on to the next generation is to ensure that they respect each other, they trust each other. Work well, look after your customers and look after your staff. I say staff, but it's, it's a team. We're a team. If you lose the trust, of your family members, you've lost the reason to be a family business. The family is still very involved and together, sort of, we, we always look at growing the business further. Obviously, one has to plan and one has to try and find solutions that will benefit the shareholders in the future and keep the business going and, and growing. And obviously the customers. I mean, the customer has to be looked after, which we've always done, and this is why um, I believe we've lasted all this year. There's no way you can last if you, if you don't look after your customers. I've got you under my skin. I've got you deep in the heart of me.